Welcome back. What's going on? Today we will be doing Red Line. Red Line is one of the newest rooms released by TryHackMe. The room is part of the Cyber Defense Pathway. Um, the room talks about the software Red Line produced by FireEye. So if you go to Google and type just Red Line FireEye. So, the software is produced by the first security firm or the non-security firm FireEye. It's used for instant response and forensic analysis. Today we will be talking about Redline, alright, and we will be going over the tasks. Basically, I have split the video, or I have made two videos. The first one we will go over uh, task 1 through task 5, and in the last video, or the second video, we will be going over task 6 and 7, we will be solving a challenge. Okay, so in this video, we will be introducing the software, how to use it, the interface, the features, the properties, and we will take a, an analysis example. Uh, the second video, we will be going over the challenges. So it's kind of long, but I have tried to, I've tried my best to make it short. So let's get started. The first thing you would do, you would log into the machine using RDB. So basically, remember that once you deploy the machine, you will have the credentials here. Use a software called Remina to log in, which I have used. So basically, if you look at my, um, let me see here. So this is, wait. So this is my desktop. I used um, I used the Mina, filled in the information by clicking on plus, adding the connection details, and you will be connecting to the machine. Okay. So once you connect, go to you will have you you will see the two uh, programs here. One is Redline, and the other one is um, IOC Editor, Indicators of Compromise Editor. We will be talking about this in the next video. Now, but in this video, we will be talking about the Redline interface. So if you click on that and wait a bit for the program to start. So as you know, okay, so it opened. So here you see we have um, three types of data collection. So basically, Redline collects data about your system in order to analyze it. So first, you have the standard collector. Second, you have the comprehensive collector. The third, you have IOC search collector. The standard collector is the standard one where it gathers the minimum amount of data about your system. All right. And it's the most popular one. The comprehensive correct collector is the same as standard as far as the data collection process, but it takes more time to complete. So if you are analyzing a machine that has been hit uh, with a malware or an incident and you want to gather all the information and you have all the time in the world, you can just go with the comprehensive collector. The last one is the create an IOC search collector. And it only applies on Windows systems. So you cannot do that on Linux systems. So basically the last method takes an indicator of compromise, indicators of compromise file, such as a file that contains hashes, IP, domain names, strings, indicators of compromise, right? And it searches your system for, uh, and, uh, for something that has or that matches the indicators you just, cre you just created. So you load the red line with a file and then you ask it to, f to find what is in your system that matches the properties of the file you created. You create indicators of compromise file with this software, IOC editor. This one here, we will talk about that. So we will use the standard collector for this video. If you click on the standard collector, um, here you have, you can select the operating system, Windows, OS, or Linux. For this video, we will use Windows. Next, we edit our script. Here we choose what we want to collect about the current system. Edit your script. So here you have some pre-selected options about the memory. 
you can select whatever you want to collect about the system such as I, for example for me I selected the process listing right the handles sections imports um, also if you go to disk here we, we can also gather information about the file system so most probably when you have an indicator of indicators of compromised file and you want to get matches with this file you want to enumerate the disk so you enable file enumeration and you select strings include files include directories md5 and that's all you can also select to enumerate the disks and volumes if you want to navigate the file system now if you go to system here we select to gather information about the system such as OS information, registry hive, analyze the event logs, uh, enumeration of the registry, user accounts, prefetch to analyze the executables that are most recently used. And of course we can click on network and select what we want to gather about the network activity such as the browser history, cookies, file downloads, URL history. Uh, DNS tables, port enumeration, we can also select routing tables and ARP tables to see connection information uh, or connections the machine has initiated to other systems. Here others include services, tasks, most importantly you want to select the tasks in order to understand more about the scheduled tasks you have to select this MD5, SHA, SHA1 services md5 SHA SHA1 and we don't need these so basically you can now run your analysis make sure also to select the entropy here and you can click on ok so once you click on ok let's click on ok now the next step is to select a folder now the folder here will be used to save the analysis files so you browse, so make sure to, collect, uh, to create a new folder in your desktop and name it analysis2. Make sure it's empty, browse. And once you click on OK, it will start, col it will start collecting data. It will take some time to finish. That's why the author of the machine has prepared already analysis file for you to start with so once this finishes you go to the folder and you start a script called run redline audit once you start this you're gonna wait some time to for the job to finish and then you will be able to access your analysis file now I'm not gonna do that right because it has already been done so to save time and to make it shorter I will just jump to the analysis results so suppose that you clicked on that, you run the script, and then the script finished. Now you will be ready to, to, nav to navigate to the analysis results. So click X on that, X here, X here, delete this. This was for demonstration purposes. Now we go to the analysis files, it is on documents, analysis. Now see, when the analysis finishes, there is a new folder created, which is sessions. You click on that, analysis of sessions, session 1, click on that, and here you will see a file with this extension, MAF, or Mandiant Analysis File. This is your analysis file. Now, this is what you want to click in order to start analyzing the machine. All right. So let's click on that, double click. It will open the analysis file with Redline. All right, so once the analysis file has been imported, you will see here the results. So on the left, we got all of the information we asked the program to collect. So we got first um, the system information. If you click on that, you will see the information about the system, such as the Windows version, the BIOS version, operating system, and other information about the user. Now, if you go to processes, 
we can expand the arrow here here you will see information about the processes such as the process name um, PID path arguments parent process most importantly to most importantly is the arguments here see how the uh, process got executed now if you go to handles the handle is the connection from the program or the, from the process to a resource on the system such as files dll's whatsoever so see we have no handles here if you click on show hand all handles uh we've got nothing okay so memory sections here we can investigate uh unsigned dll's so review named sections only injected all memory sections and we got nothing because maybe we didn't collect them we didn't select to collect these or there is none so there is no unsigned details if you click on strings now here we see information about the captured strings but we've got also nothing which is weird okay ports here we see the connections made to the outside world what were what were what were the ports on this tab the local port the local address the remote port and the, re the remote address and the remote ports and what is the process or the path of the process all right what do we have else also we have the registry information now most importantly if you go to timeline here i'm going to skip this so timeline here we can understand more about the uh, incident and when it happened by using the filters on here so now it's taking some time to load i'm going to give it some time but we can use the filters here to understand when the compromise happened on the system and if we know when the host or when the compromise happened on the system we can use something called the type wrinkles in this tab to filter out the timeline to only events which took place around the time we know the compromise happened so if you click on time wrinkles no wrinkles filters created we can create a new custom time wrinkle and we can select here the time for example i want to show the events that happened around um say 13 to 14 uh yep okay so here oh 13 there is nothing we can edit that and get because i mean there was nothing on the machine so we get it back to 15 and uh, select nothing back to the correct date which is 16 five minutes before and five minutes after nothing let's see here why we get nothing so 16 10 today so zero items on that date okay let's go back to fields so now after we have determined or after we have uh, explored the interface and the information we have gathered about the system now it's time to just go back to the questions and see what is required uh, to find so now the intro the intro the data collection see the questions so the first question what data collection method takes the least amount of time we 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 said it was standard collector you are read reading a research paper on a new strain of ransomware you want to run the data collection on your computer based on the patterns provided such as domains hashes ip addresses file names what method would you choose to run a granular data collection against the known indicators um we spoke and we said that it is ioc search collector what script would you run to initiate the data collection process please include the file extension and we said it was the run redline audit.bat which is the a script that is created once you 
have configured all of the options or data collection options on the program. The next one, if you want to if you want to collect the data on disks and volumes, under which option you can find it? And we know that when we edit, when we configure the options, we have an option to edit the script. There's a tab called disks. We can from there select disk enumeration. What cache does Windows use to maintain a preference for a recently for recently executed code? Is the prefetch? Um, okay. Next task. Red line interface. Where in red red line UI can you view information about the logged in user? Okay, let's see. So if you click on system information, you will see here information about the user. And under that tab, we see logged in user. It is administrator. So basically here, it's here where we can see information about the logged in user system information. Now the questions. So. Now you should be familiar with some of the data collection terms and techniques are shown in the previous task. Armed with this knowledge, can you find what the intruder planted for you on the computer? So, we are analyzing analysis file of a victim machine that got infected with malware. We want to find out some information about that. So the first thing, provide the operating system detected for the workstation. If you go to system information, and go to operating system information, you will see that the operating system was Windows Server 2019 standard 17763. And this is the answer. Next one, provide the BIOS version for the workstation. The BIOS version, of course, is written also under the system information, and it is Zen 42 Amazon. What is the suspicious scheduled task? that got created on the victim's computer. So now we have to find information about the scheduled tasks. To do that, we go to tasks and we click on tasks. Now we will see kinda long list, right? So to find the task, I got to actions and in the actions, I could also hear uh, another long, a list if I scroll to the right let me make this okay so we have the type of the uh, action the actions are the commands or the applications that get executed when that when the uh, task or the scheduled task gets triggered or when that when it's time just uh, is here so when the time is here or when it's time comes the action is triggered or uh, applied so here we see the actions or the applications, but if you scroll to the very right, you see all the task name, right? Task names. So now here, what's the question? What is the suspicious scheduled task? Let's look for something suspicious. So here we see Google update, Google update, um, Amazon EC2 launch, but we see one here, there is no certificate subject, there is no certificate issuer, no signature, no SHA. The, the attributes of this task are near to empty, right? We have only, we have only the executable path, uh, the path to the application or the program or whatever it is that will be launched. And we see it is C users administrator pictures THM blue2.png. It's a picture, right? But if you go to the task, you see it's saying MS Office Update FA.ka. Um, so the name doesn't match with the kind of application that is uh, launched, right? So we put this aside and we scroll down to see if we have something else. Scroll down, you see here .NET Framework scroll down i'm not saying that if you see a familiar name it means that the task is not suspicious but the methodology is to look for the clearly suspicious ones and if you don't find anything you will start investigating the ones that look familiar now if you see if you have here something called device and it is signed all the signed ones you can ignore them this one is called scheduled let's see what it is 
scheduled is there is no executable path it means it does nothing it's just a scheduled task scroll down scroll down So anything else seems okay of course okay for the initial analysis not for the uh, in-depth analysis now for now we got this one and it is the answer for our question find the message that the intruder left for you in the task now the intruder has left a message for us in this task so basically until far we know the task name and we know the executable path if you double click on the task, it doesn't open. Okay, let's go to tasks and find it. So we can just copy the name and use the search feature to jump directly to task, not waste your more time with the long list. So here it is. Now we can get more details about this. We see here the name, we see the comment. The comment is the answer for the question. We see also the creator, which is administrator. Now, this is the answer for the question. Next one. There is a new system event ID created by an intruder with the source name THM redline user and the type error. Find the event ID. So now investigate the event logs or even uh, yeah, the events. So go to event logs. And again, we see a long list. So here we come to the search feature. So we go back. Now the sort, the name of the or the source name of that is this one. We copy that, and we search for the event. Aha! Uh -huh. So here it is, the source name. Now, the message is someone cracked my password. I need to rename my puppy so this is the event uh, required from us to investigate and it is uh, it has the ID 546 and it is error right so maybe the the guy here was trying to log in but he realized he forgot his password so this is the event ID provide the message for the event ID you saw it it looks like the intruder downloaded a file it looks like the intruder downloaded a file containing the flag for question 8 provide the full URL of the website now we go to the network activity in the network activity we have something we have the file download history if you click on that it will give us a list of all of the files the all the files yeah that have been downloaded in the victim machine now the question is to find a file containing the flag for the question 8 now it's, this is the question 8 the question 8 is saying provide the full path to where the file was downloaded so again we read the question it looks like the intruder downloaded a file containing the flag provide the URL of the website now the file contains the flag right so we look among the file names we see a file called flag.txt all right and we see the URL so this is our answer why because the answer the question is saying look for the file that contains the flag so obviously this is the file that contains the flag and this is the URL where it came from which is your answer provide the full path to where the file was downloaded now to find out the place or the path uh, where the victim machine has saved the file we see under the target directory is the path to which the file has been downloaded now if we navigate to that path we go to this PC navigate to C program files Windows mail some folder and we see a file called flag we open it and it is your flag okay then so that's the first challenge of the room now IOC search collector you can just follow the screenshots you don't need to uh, do anything because the challenge 
of the iOS, uh, the iOS hit challenge starts at task 6 and task 7. But I will provide you, you can see the answers from here. You can find these answers by just looking at the screenshots the author provided. No worries about the IEC search collector. I'm going to explain them in the challenge here, where we'll be using the indicators of compromise search collector at, uh, in the program, and we will provide the answers from here. So, for now, we are done. In the next video, we will be doing tasks 6 and 7. So, see you in the next video.